My name is Frank Childs. I run marketing for, uh, for Akamai's Carrier Networks Unit. And um, this is my third year at the conference. Uh, first of all, can everyone hear me OK? Everyone good? OK. Up a little higher? <clears throat> OK. Um, and I, I was noticing that uh, somebody else had said um, uh, in an earlier session how the conference has evolved, where you know two years ago, it was talking about what is an operator CDN? Is it necessary? What are the business models? Uh, you know, last year it was more about well, it's happening, and what you know, how is it happening? How is it applied? What is the technology? And this year it's been a lot more about the applications themselves. What are they using it for? How are they extending it? How are operators utilizing common CDN frameworks? Um, and that's really what I'm going to talk about today as well. Uh, which is specifically how a common CDN framework uh, can be extended, and in this particular case study has been extended inside an operator network for their video on demand architecture. So, you know, sort of the first generation or, or previous generation of video on demand was largely uh, closed systems, uh, proprietary systems, had difficult scaling, certainly didn't have the reach to iPads and other IP connected devices. It, usually involved QAM delivery or a managed IPTV system to a closed set-top. Certainly didn't offer off-net delivery as part of the solution and um, also didn't really address anything regarding over-the-top traffic. So you've heard a lot about you know, how you contend with over-the-top traffic in addition to uh, delivering your own applications. Uh, so that's what we're going we're gonna to talk about today. Um, so this particular, you know, we, um, um, we deployed about a year ago with an international operator in Europe. Uh, had about 3.5 million broadband subscribers. And their goal was to use a common CDN components to deliver all of their video on demand uh, content. Um, so they didn't want to use the proprietary uh, qualm based delivery. Uh, the delivery of the VOD content was to IP-enabled set-tops, so they did actually have legacy set-tops that were IP-enabled, but they also wanted to extend it to IP-connected devices, uh, including iPads, iPhones, Droids, uh, PCs, and, uh, and gaming stations. Um, the, the primary goal wasn't really about charging for the video as much as it was to upsell the subscribers based on premium video and higher tier broadband packages. Much like in the US where uh, a lot of the VOD content is free, it offers a sticky service and gets people to upsell to, to, to premium video packages. Uh, they also wanted to federate globally with Akamai or a global CDN to provide off network delivery. This was a very important component and we'll show the results of that. It's amazing how much of their video actually goes off net to IP connected devices versus staying on net to their, to their subscribers. And then uh, also a benefit of utilizing a CDN was they were able to provide overflow capacity for redundancy and temporary flash crowds. So the traditional VOD model would have dictated, well, I have to over provision my VOD uh, systems for 2x, 3x, maybe even more depending on how often uh, I deploy these servers inside my infrastructure. In this particular example, they were able to uh, utilize some of the Akamai capacity to provide a buffer in case of flash crowd or, or uh, if they had any sort of network outages. And lastly, an important component de behind their deployment was really offload of the volume OTT traffic. So part of a converged operator CDN is if you're going to deploy extra capacity is to utilize the capacity. So when you're not delivering video on demand content, you can utilize the capacity according to your own rules, your own business priorities to offload over the top traffic. And so we're going to kind of go through a little bit, uh, a little bit behind the workflow, behind how they did it, a little bit about their deployment architecture, and then get into uh, to some of their results. So uh, the workflow obviously starts with the content preparation. Um, this was really their systems, right? So they, uh, they had video content that they had been managing. They had a content management system. They had encoders. Uh, they had to extend the encoding to include uh, things for HLS and other formats so that they could reach uh, other standard IP connected devices. So it wasn't just to their set tops anymore. And they also handled encryption through their content preparation phase. They would then upload multiple formats of the of the video to to on net Akamai net storage. So this was 
This was Akamai Storage, which is basically like the common repository for the video, but it was capacity that was dedicated to the operator. So the, the, the systems were deployed on their network. It was dedicated to their use. There was no other content that was in it, and they could completely manage, manage the origin. They did have to push multiple content, I mean, multiple formats to it so that they had a different file format uh, for the different types of streaming, smooth streaming, HLS, uh, et cetera. Um, Akamai does offer in-network packaging, but uh, for this particular example, um, you know, it wasn't so much content where you just couldn't store uh, multiple redundant uh, copies of the file. They then used uh, their own uh, dedicated CDN capacity, and these were Akamai servers de dedicated to the operator's deployment. And we'll talk about the network deployment in, uh, in a little bit. Uh, that was then delivered, and it was progressive media download, uh, did support multiple formats, uh, delivered to a set-top box, which was IP-enabled. Um, and so this set-top box would do sort of the legacy broadcast video as well as the IP-enabled on-demand content. And then it would play to the, uh, to the TV, obviously. They actually handled, <coughs> excuse me, all the um, uh, authorization through the radius system. So we put, they, they had a uh, HTTP front end in front of the radius system. And the Akamai Edge servers would go back and forth to the, uh, to the HTTP proxy to do the uh, authentication calls back and forth. So this kind of de developed sort of end to end uh, video on demand content over their set top box using their existing content preparation and Akamai capacity that was dedicated for their use case. They then took that and extended it to iPads, uh, PCs, uh, smartphones, droids, etc. cetera, uh, again using the uh, content uh, formats that were uploaded to the net storage and then delivered to the devices using the same authentication call. So now rather than using a proprietary VOD system, they are now into using standardized CDN platforms. They can deliver the application to their set-tops and extend it to other IP-connected devices. So the next phase was to get to off-net delivery. They basically did uh, data replication uh, to Akamai net storage. Now, this is storage that was multi-use. So this was not dedicated to their applications. They are now uh, replicating to Akamai net storage that's going to be hosting all forms of content. This would include you know, Apple, BBC, other types of content that would be basically hosted in the cloud versus, uh, versus on net. And it would use the standard Akamai edge servers uh, using the CDN capacity to deliver to the three screens. And the last component was Akamai management. So they would use standard Akamai's man management servers, something we call the uh, Luna control portal um, or control center. And this is where they would provision the content, they would set their uh, geo rules, they would uh, uh, generate reports and be able to manage the content and uh, provision the content from there. So this was sort of the end-to-end -end workflow for this particular operator. Again, the goals were to, to uh, deliver using standard CDN architecture, extend to other devices, and to extend their reach via off-network presence. When you look at the deployment itself, um, the, uh, they had four regions. So they, they, <clears throat> they also have multiple POPs per region, but for, for their own economic reasons, they didn't feel compelled to to actually deploy at the POP level, but it did make economic sense to deploy at the regional level. So they had, they had uh, the net storage at the core, and then they had uh, multiple server clusters in each region with redundancy in each region. And they could actually serve one region from the other in case of a failure uh, of either server capacity or network outage. And they would also put standard Akamai servers in the core for greater network offload. And we'll talk about what the benefits to that were. I think what's important here is this is dedicated CDN capacity to the operator. So, so Akamai, the operator is determining which locations this goes in, how much capacity will be deployed, and what the business rules will be behind serving the content. So they, they created custom what we called mapping rules, and we'll talk about mapping a little bit, in terms of which, con, uh, which servers which would serve which content and according to which priority. Any unused capacity behind this deployment, they would then utilize to offload global content. So if a, if a 
uh, if, VOD, if the VOD service wasn't fully utilized, and it rarely was, it was never fully utilized, quite honestly, they could use those same infrastructure elements with their mapping rules to offload uh, software downloads, over-the-top video, and optimize their network uh, to, to produce network savings and also to uh, uh, provide a better user experience to the, uh, to the end user. And the last piece was, was they federated, and, and federated is a word you've heard a lot today, but <clears throat> when I talk about federation in, in our sense, we're talking about the business problem more so than did it use a common standard uh, for interconnect, which, which there still isn't one. I mean, it's being worked on through the CDNI and IETF, but they wanted to federate to make sure that they would be able to reach subscribers wherever they were, and that was, uh, that was what we were able to offer them using the Akamai Intelligent Platform. So those are the three important points behind the network deployment. Again, it's, it's capacity that they manage and, um, uh, well, well, it's managed by Akamai, but they control the actual business rules. And that leads us to, to, to the dynamic mapping. So Akamai for years has delivered service based on what we call dynamic mapping. And in this particular case, the operator controls the map rules. In other words, they control the DNS rules based on which servers serve which content and in which priority. So this allows them to maintain SLAs for any content type. VOD content being their top priority, again, if servers are underutilized and they're not serving VOD content, you should be offloading over-the-top video, and you should be offloading software downloads and other web traffic if it suits you. Uh, secondly, maximize server and network utilization to increase network efficiency. When you deploy capacity, it is, uh, you know, if you deploy capacity for a worst case scenario that includes 3x capacity, you should be utilizing that capacity for other, other reasons. The ability to prioritize uh, their own content uh, and uh, over the top content using the same infrastructure. Um, make decisions based on their own quality and, and network economics. So, uh, if something happens, something goes down, uh, there's too much VOD content going on, you can push the content delivery to other regions within the on the network, according to your own dynamics. Uh, fall back on the Akamai platform for major flash crowds and outages, and uh, again, extend network reach. This can all be done, again, using the dynamic mapping. So let's talk about a little bit about their results. So, this is uh, a little, little less than a year it's been, been operational. And I don't know if you can, you can see it, but uh, basically they are now peaking at about 390,000 users uh, per day. And those are unique households, so it could actually be multiple devices per household. And an average um, uh, peak um, on an hourly basis is about 80,000 subs. Um, based on about 3.5 million uh, households, that represents about 11% of their total broadband users accessing the service daily. Now, some of those users don't actually have the, the VOD-enabled set-top, um, so uh, that skews it uh, uh, a little bit, but uh, we don't have insight into that. We just know that uh, they have a total of 3.5 million subs. In terms of what's delivered monthly, uh, and there are about 4,000 VOD titles uh, that are each generating at least uh, 100 gigabytes or more. Uh, many of them, as you can see, are generating um, about 65 or 50 uh, terabytes a month based on the popular titles. Uh, average file size is anywhere from 800 meg to, you know, you can see high def videos of 3.5 uh, gig. Um, and it's basically representing about 8 million VOD titles a month and eight petabytes of data per month that we're delivering on their behalf. Interestingly, because it's VOD content, it doesn't have a huge long tail. So we're able to uh, deliver all that with about 4.5 terabytes of storage. And because uh, it's not such a huge long tail, we're getting about 99% origin offload, meaning the Akamai net storage is really just the repository. Most of the edge servers are actually delivering the video, which saves them a lot of backhaul or backbone savings. <clears throat> this is interesting because it shows a breakdown between their on-net and off-net delivery. So on-net, they're delivering about 30 gig uh, at peak with about 99% origin offload. Uh, off-net, there's about 20 gig. Um, so that means about 40% of the files we deliver actually get delivered off-network. So again, the benefits of, of, of being able to have an instant federation is, 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 is visualized here. 
Uh, the origin offload isn't as impressive because now when you're off net, you're being lumped in with other types of traffic that, uh, uh, you know, the global content delivery platform, if you will. Uh, but still, it's impressive, 75% offload plus, uh, plus about 40% of their total content. Again, federation success, um, we're focusing on the business problems behind federation, more so than the standard per se. Um, but reach subscribers when they're not on net, clearly, uh, clearly uh, check mark there. Uh, utilize the external CDN capacity for overflow for flash crowds and redundancy. And the last piece, which we're going to talk about now, was to utilize the available CDN to provide OTT offload and a better user experience. So again, when they're not using that dedicated capacity for VOD, use it for their own, uh, use it for uh, OTT traffic offload. So what we did was we created customized map rules as a secondary priority. Uh, so it was weighted toward VOD as the top priority. Second priority was OTT offload. So the top 30% video titles we tried to offload, uh, we, we offload via, via map rules. And what you see here is about, um, they're ingesting uh, about 100 meg, let's see if, uh, about 100 meg of traffic and delivering almost 5 gig. So basically a 73 to 1 ratio, a 98% hit ratio behind this particular content. And it didn't make sense to, to statistically cache the entire internet. Again, we wanted to focus on the biggest bang for the buck. It's deeper in the network. We wanted to optimize storage. So we topped on the top 30%. That produced 73 to 1 ratios. Here you can see we are, um, let's see if I can show this right here. This is where we're refreshing the rules for new content. And uh, in that particular case, it's about a 350 megabytes of ingestion. We're able to do this because we use sort of global and national content popularity rules to determine this 30% um, uh, popularity. And then we push those rules to the operator so that they can achieve maximum savings. Uh, storage efficiency. So if you look here, this is the 30% map rule. It's generating about 5 or 6 gig. This is the 70% map rule, which is generating about 11 gig. Um, the interesting thing is when you look at the storage utilization, though, that 30% 30, 30 map rule, all the content there only utilizes about 10 terabytes of data. It's really the, the head, right? And if you look at the long tail, that's 1.7 petabytes. Again, trying to optimize bang for the buck inside the operator network to, to increase the um, offload and um, uh, increase the utilization of their CDN. We then extended it to software downloads. We didn't get uh, 73 to 1, but we were able to get 27 to 1 ratio. Uh, and this would include anything from iOS updates, et cetera. Uh, again, 300 meg ingestion, about 8 gigabytes delivered. Again, you know, so their, their business rules are you know, VOD, then OTT video, and when you're not doing that, deliver software updates. Uh, last few slides, and then I'll open up the floor to uh, conversation uh, questions. We were actually, uh, because we also had servers at their core, um, we were able to, uh, about 28 gig of traffic delivered deeper in their network at about a 35 to 1 caching efficiency. That represented about 26% 20, uh, of Akamai's global traffic offloaded on their network using the same infrastructure that they used for VOD. And uh, through our servers that we had deployed in the core, we got an additional 68 gig of capacity out of it, or another 54%. So literally, about 80% of their over-the-top traffic from Akamai was offloaded onto their network. And again, the operator controls the caching rules for this particular example. So they can modify the mapping rules to optimize their own network conditions. Final results of the, of the project, which is still growing. I mean, the traffic triples about every, uh, tripled the first year, let's say that. I don't know what it'll do next year. Uh, about 400,000 unique households per day, about eight petabytes of data per month. Uh, about 40% of the traffic delivered off net via uh, Akamai Federation. Um, about 80% of the Akamai traffic offloaded, so they get an OTT savings, uh, overflow capacity from Akamai. Uh, six months, so the other thing to note is this took about six months from concept and decision to the design phase and implementation, so much shorter than your typical uh, VOD time. And then we're utilizing one single converged CDN. 
Uh, so that's all I had. Um, you know, if there's any questions, I have a few, maybe a couple minutes, and then we'll move right on to uh, uh, to Edgecast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had 300 video titles for uh, OTT, right? Thirty percent. No, but but I think you configured 300 video titles for that 73 to one. Uh, I don't know what the total number of video titles were. I think it was more than 300, but it was about 4.5 terabytes of data. Now, were they short form? Uh, Mostly long form. Long form. Long form. Were they, I mean, uh, YouTube kind of traffic? or No. Oh, okay. No, it was Akamai customer traffic, just to be clear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was long form premium video traffic that was offloaded. So Akamai represents, I don't know, a little about 20-25% about of their total network and offloading about 80% of it through, uh, through this initiative. Yeah. Was Akamai managing the operator CDN network or was operator? Akamai is managing the operator CDN in this case. So you know, in the first slide, I showed the use case. You know, the Akamai servers in the Akamai cloud is managing it. They are able to provision content. They control the rules on pushing it to the Akamai origin, the net storage. Uh, but reporting and uh, basic capacity provisioning is done by Akamai. And the uh, traffic management is done by Akamai? The traffic management is done by Akamai, again, according to the operator's mapping rules. Good questions? Okay.